Hello, well, Auntie. Welcome again to Mbabane Islands Church Children's Ministry. We thank God for this beautiful Sunday morning He has blessed us with, and we thank Him that it's bright and and um, sunny. And I hope where you are, it is bright and sunny as where I am today. I I pray that as we listen to His word today, we are all inspired and we are all blessed and we grow. We remember last week we were speaking about the fruit of the spirit with Auntie Megs. I hope you were as blessed as I was um, as she spoke about how we can bear the fruit of the spirit, that we have to be attached to the vine and the Holy Spirit is the one that bears the fruit out of our lives. And today we are going to zoom in on one of those fruits which is love. Uh, we are going to join Auntie Pezulu as she speaks more about and uh, how we can bear love as we are attached to the Holy Spirit. Uh, before we join Auntie Me uh, Pezulu today, can we just close our eyes so we can pray together? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, my God, for the gift of life. We thank you, my Father, for this wonderful day that you have given us today. And Father, as we are coming together to listen to your word, I pray that Holy Spirit, you will speak to us, and that Lord, we will be transformed, and that every day, God, as we listen to your word, we will grow to be more and more like you, Father, so that when you come back to take your church, we can be part of the bride of Jesus Christ. We thank you, my Father. We give you honor. May you be blessed even as we are listening to your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So, Bo Auntie, we are going to just join worship and we are going to just give God honor and glory. Um, I hope you are enjoying worship as you are joining us. Um, and then we will just head over to Auntie Pears for our lesson. Bye. Staring into your eyes makes my heart come alive. Suddenly brought to life when I met you. Reaching beyond the skies, running deep, stretching wide. Perfect love realized here with you. Come on now. Now the stop is for real. You will never let go. Never let go. Oh, it's more than just words. Love beyond my control. Out of control. Heads up! This is real love. This is real love.
auntie. How are you? I hope you are all doing well at home. And I hope we are all keeping safe. We are washing our hands frequently and we are sanitizing. We are wearing our mask. Uh, well, today uh, you are with Auntie Pez once again and we shall learn about uh, our lesson is entitled Love, which is one of the, um, uh, the fruit of the spirit. Uh, well, before we can embark on our lesson today, shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you, Father, that we are here, get at here to listen to your word. We pray, my Father, in the name of Jesus, that you may help us to listen carefully to your word and hide our, your word in our hearts, my Father, in the name of Jesus, and keep it in our hearts that we may not sin against you. We pray, my Father, that as we, as the, your word is being shared, O oh God, help us as for and to listen to it and to keep it in our hearts in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, my Father, that you have kept us this thus far, and we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen, Mo Auntie. So basically, today we are learning about love, which is taken from Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. And well, if we can recap last week, Auntie Meg covered the fruit of the Spirit. That is, he, she said in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, uh, the Bible records, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. Against such things, there is no law. That is Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 to 23. So basically, uh, today, as we can see, uh, having covered the fruit of the Spirit uh, as an introduction with Antimax, today we are covering the first fruit, which is love. Now, let's look at our memory verse. Our memory verse says, Beloved, uh, or first of all, it is taken in 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Let's do it again. It's 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 to 8. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and, and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. Amen. So let us memorize this verse for Auntie. It is important that a memory verse is kept in our minds and we remind ourselves over and over again with a memory verse. This one is about love. Let us look at what love is. Uh, I, I, I love the, 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 I, I love the, the, the definition that is given by the Bible. In fact, there are secular definitions of what love is per se. But here, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4, uh, 7 to 8, 
The Bible says, love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, love is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, it does not delight in evil, it rejoices with truth. Love always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it perseveres, love never fails. Mo auntie, there are different kinds of love uh, per se that are, are, that are existent in life. You would learn about the agape love, that is the God kind of love, the love that is so unconditional. And there is the different love, you know, when you love your friend or when you love your, your mom, your family members. So basically there is different kinds of love. But what we have to focus on mainly um, is that the God kind of love is the love that we should have, that the love that we should have towards each other as such. Because it will help you that you would be patient with people. You would be kind to people. So if you love someone, if you have the love of God within you, then you will not be keeping a, a record of wrongs. So as the word of God says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. So basically, now let us look at, I have looked at a Bible story that would explain more to us about love. And our Bible story is taken from the book of Luke, chapter 25. I mean, it's, just, it's Luke, chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. This is the parable of the Good Samaritan. It's entitled the parable of the Good Samaritan. Actually, here, I love the way the Lord Jesus is responding about love. Now let us read Luke chapter 10, verse 25 to 37. Make sure you take your Bibles and read with me. Find in this particular lesson, in the interest of time, we shall just be reading probably not everything eh, but it is important that you take your bible and read through the whole story so that you understand its context uh from verse 25 on one occasion an expert of an expert in the law stood up to test jesus Teacher, he said, he asked, what must I do to, I mean, to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law? He replied, that is Jesus replied, asking this particular expert, what is written in the law? How do you read it? This expert answered, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. We see here, Bo uh, Auntie, I said, uh, there is different kinds of love. We have to love God. We have to love our neighbor here. From this verse, we learn we have to love God. We have to love our neighbor. So, 
the Bible says we have to love God with all of our hearts, with all our soul, with all our strength, with all our mind. And then love our neighbor as you love yourself. I hope you love yourself. You wouldn't want anything bad to happen to yourself. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. This, uh, the Bible continues in verse 28. You have answered correctly. Jesus replied, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself. Who wants to justify himself? The expert in the law. So he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? You remember the verse says, love your neighbor as yourself. And then the expert asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Hmm. I wish you could answer me, or Angie. By the way, who is your neighbor? Now let us as focus on the Lord Jesus' response. In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him, as we can see, a they stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. That is not so good. And then, in verse 31, the Bible continues, say, a priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, the man is lying there half dead. He passed on by the other side. Wow. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place, he saw this man lying half dead and passed on the other side. But a Samaritan as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. May I repeat this one? But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw the man, he took pity on him. Go, well, Auntie. The Bible records this is the third person seeing this half dead man. The man who has been beaten. But the reaction of the first two, they just saw the man and they passed by. But now the reaction of this Samaritan, when he saw the man, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. So we can see even here, the Samaritan uh, bandaging this uh, man, and then pouring some oil and wine and then taking this man into his donkey. We can see this man is in the Samaritan uh, in, in the Samaritan's uh, donkey. And then he took him to an inn and brought him to an inn and took care of this man. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the inner keeper. That is the place where he left the men to be taken good care of. 
that is, then he had to pay, he paid. And he said, uh, look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. That is, this good Samaritan, he paid uh, some amount of money for the inner keeper to keep this man, to let this man sleep over there uh, and take care of, of him. And then later on, he said, if there is any more amount of money that is required, I will pay more later. Which of these, in verse 36, which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? Who is asking this question? Jesus. I am asking at this point in time to you, Abu Anji, which of these three people who passed, uh, do you think was a neighbor to the men who fell into the hands of the, of the robbers. The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Amen. So we can see here, Love, which has, that is love in action itself. That is someone helping another person who needs help. So, let us go on, Gebo Andi. As we look at love in action, love is a fruit of the Spirit. And a command from God. We said the first fruit of the Spirit there is love. We have just seen a story where this good Samaritan demonstrated some love to a person who was just by the road. So basically that is what the Lord Jesus is emphasizing to us that we need to love each other and take care of each other. Because ideally, if you would think about it, you wouldn't want someone to leave you in a situation where you need some help, but then, and that person doesn't offer you the help that you need. So basically, it's important to demonstrate love to each other. As Christians, we are expected to walk in the Spirit. We are learning about the fruit of the Spirit here. Ne? Love is a, a fruit of the Spirit. So we are expected to walk in the Spirit. And one fruit of the Spirit is love. God commands us to love Him first, and to love one another as God has loved us. When you are put in a situation with a friend or anyone who has done something wrong to you, a jealousy, gossip, hatred, a, or any other sinful attitude, I usually the natural reactions that you might have. So you see, Auntie, in real life, we interact with people, family, church members, uh, our peers, uh, at school, or in the community. But then, or if anybody does anything wrong to you, uh, you find that you would probably hate them 
as a reaction or talk about them or talk badly about them. So, because we are sinful, we react in sinful ways. We get jealous, we talk about others and spread gossip about them. We might go as far as hating those people or that person in our hearts. But God has commanded us to love one another. God has commanded us to love one another. We remember, if we do not love one another, then we are not of God. If we are to walk in the Spirit, we have to love one another. Demonstrate love to someone else at all times, no matter what the person has done to you. The Bible has commanded us, God has commanded us to love a, our neighbor. We have seen that our neighbor is anyone else, anyone who is not yourself per se. Anyone who is not yourself, that's how we can define who your neighbor is. So how does the spirit pro how does the spirit produce a change in us? We remember we are learning about the fruit of the spirit. The spirit helps us to love. Instead of reacting with jealousy, gossip, hatred, or any other sinful attitude towards someone else, the Spirit helps us to respond with love. Sometimes it is not so easy to respond with love to someone who has done something wrong to you or ill-treated you. But here, Bo Andy, as we are God's children, as we walk, we are commanded to walk in the Spirit. We have to demonstrate love. Consider what the Word of God says. Because love here is not what we want. Per se, it's not what, I mean, it is, it's what God has commanded you to do. So. That is, respond in love, in whatever situation, to whoever. And love that person. As you love yourself. Meaning you have to treat someone else as you want to be treated as well. So we must respond in love. To be Christ-like and to help others know that we are his own disciples, that we are children of God, we remember. We must respond to all situations with love. It means we need to put the needs of others before our own. If we look at, if we, remind, if we remember the story that we have just uh, learnt about from the Bible, that good Samaritan, he put his, that good Samaritan, he put his need aside. He needed to go wherever he was going to, but then he put his need aside and attended someone he probably didn't even know who needed help. So if someone wrongs us, for instance, we must be willing to forgive that person and to love that person just as God loved us. Love as a fruit of the Spirit helps us to know and it also helps others to see that we are being transformed to look more like Jesus. Remember, in our memory verse, it says God is love. God is love. So if we love, if we have love, even other people will see that we are being transformed to look like Jesus. It is, it is important for Angie. We can not ever emphasize this, overemphasize this, that we need to love one another. We need to respond in love in all situations, no matter what the, the situation would be. And we have to love our neighbor as ourselves. That is love 
anyone else who is not us as you would love yourself. Finally, we can show love to one another by putting others first and thinking of them more than ourselves. That would demonstrate a Christ-like. Loving them like Christ loved us. That would demonstrate a Christ-like behavior, Bo Auntie. May God help us, Bo Auntie, to love one another. Uh, as we are ending this particular session, uh, lesson, let us remind ourselves of the memory verse. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. It is taken from 1 John chapter 4 verse 7 to 8. Well, we thank God for his word. I hope we have got the message. We shall demonstrate love in all situations to anyone who is not us. Oh, Auntie, we shall love God first and love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Then in that way, people will see and we shall know that we are being transformed to look like Christ. Amen. Let us pray for and Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We have learned about love. We have learned about the fruit of the Spirit and love which is the fruit of the Spirit. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you may help us my Father, to be filled with your Spirit at all times, so that we may respond in love in all situations. Help us, my Father, in Jesus' mighty name, that we may be. Love God with all our hearts, with all our soul, with all our mind. And now we need to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Let us put other people first. Let us put other people first, my God, and actually think of their needs and, and help them whenever they need our help. If they need our forgiveness, then we should forgive them. Because that's what you said in your word that love forgives. Love is kind. My Father, help us in the name of Jesus as we love, demonstrate love to each other, that we may grow and grow to be more like Jesus, because God is love. Thank you, my Father, in the name of Jesus, that you will enable us to respond in love in all situations. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for auntie.